Today's episode is about Hyperloop technology. We explain how it works, where it came from, and we go to LA to chat with the CEO of the first Hyperloop company to find out where this tech is going. <laughs> it's gonna take us 67 hours to take the train from New York to LA. Dane, 67 hours? Why in 2018 are we taking such antiquated forms of transportation? Well, if Elon Musk had his way. If Elon Musk had his way, we'd both be living on Mars and LA would be a distant speck in the sky. That sounds really nice right now, actually. Yeah, it would be nice. No, I, I mean, I, I was thinking more like an earthly way, uh -huh. where we would just hop on a levitating pod, shoot through a vacuum tube. Okay. Hyperloop. All right, well, we don't have access to the Hyperloop, but if we did have access to the Hyperloop, that would cut our travel time into like four and a half hours. You see, the problem with traditional car and train travel is air pressure and friction are just plain bad for transportation. Because when an object moves through the air, it has to push a big wall of air along with it. Behind the vehicle, all of that displaced air acts as suction, otherwise known as drag. And the faster an object is moving, the more drag there is. Planes, trains, cars, they'll have slender or slanted fronts, which help them cut through the air, reducing air pressure. But a big contributor to friction is the wheels that they use because they have to touch the ground. So how do you alleviate these high-speed travel suppressants? Well, the first thing you do is take away the air, and the second thing you do is alleviate the need for wheels to touch the ground at all. Also, real quick, before we go, we should really check out the Whispering Gallery. Wonderment awaits! I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna go over there, I think. Hold on, Dan, I got something I gotta do real quick. Hey, if you're thinking about making a professional website, you should check out Domain.com. They have everything you need for your .com and .net needs, including professional website builders and all the tools to make your dreams a reality. So if you want to start sharing your ideas with the world, check out Domain.com. It turns out the people at Domain.com really love Contextual, so much so that they're giving you a discount. You can buy domain names, web hosting, even email services, and use the discount code Contextual at checkout to get 20% off your purchase. Okay, I'm back. The thing about a sweater in New York is that it's a sauna in LA. Anyway, combining low pressure vacuum tubes and magnetic levitation, AKA maglev technology, the Hyperloop will be able to carry things at super fast speeds. But this really isn't a new concept. High-speed vacuum tube trains have been a staple of the science fiction genre for pretty much a decade. In real life, it was Dr. Robert Goddard, inventor of the first liquid-fueled rocket, who was credited with the idea of a vacuum train in 1906. Sort of like those pneumatic tubes that people used to sort mail in. This idea was finally put to the test in the 90s by Ernst G. Frankel, Emeritus Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Ocean Engineering at MIT. He and his team set up a half-mile test tube, sucked all the air out of it, and shot different objects through it, starting with a ping-pong ball. But Frankel's prototype was only equally as fast and unfortunately more expensive than the high-speed trains in China and Japan at the time. Now it's important to note that the term Hyperloop isn't the name of any company, but more so the name of the technology or mode of transportation. Yeah, in fact, there are many Hyperloop companies now, including Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, which was actually the first. The first? The first? Wow. How fast can the Hyperloop actually travel? So the Hyperloop moves uh, just below the speed of sound, which is around 760 miles per hour. Whoa. Oh my god. What does it feel like to travel at the speed of sound? It actually doesn't feel much different. What you really feel is acceleration and deceleration when you depart and when you arrive. Now we've seen maglev technology before in the bullet train and things like that. How is this different? A high-speed train loses 90% of its energy to overcome the air resistance. The real game changer is to put everything inside a tube and have a low-pressure environment, so almost no air inside so that you don't have any resistance. So this is a normal aluminum tube, and this is a magnet, a very strong one, so watch out for your credit cards. <laughs> of course, a magnet and aluminum, they don't react. But what do you think happens if it lets us fall inside this tube? Wouldn't it just go right through? There you go. Whoa. The magnet passes through the aluminum, which is a conductor, and creates eddy current fields. Yeah, it gives you really the feeling of what powers are there. How safe is this? I'm sure you get that question all the time. The system is actually much safer than an airplane. We're roughly 10 times safer. It's completely enclosed, so it's independent from weather. There's nothing that can be inside in front of you. You're on a track, guided by a computer system with human supervision. There's not much that can go wrong, but if anything happens, you stop. The system is repressurized within seconds, and you leave through the emergency exits. 
skeptics. They're saying that with all the political red tape and construction and costs, that Hyperloop's never gonna get off the ground. Not to make that pun. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a lot of agreements around the world already with several governments, but it's definitely not that easy when you have to work with politicians. Hundreds of years ago already, they tried to make tube travel reality. There were several attempts in the US, there were attempts outside of the US, and they all failed because they were depending on one company or one government. So we realized it had to be a movement. And that's what it is today, it's a movement. You have several companies, we're working with several governments, not just with one. Our vision is that maybe we don't need to charge any tickets. Wow. Right? The Hyperloop, because we are in a low pressure environment, so we use very little energy, it has very low operational cost, and therefore can be profitable in a very short time span. I think we're well equipped to do this. This is so cool. Wow. Now this future is amazing. Proposals for new Hyperloop routes are popping up all over the world. Elon Musk's boring company was actually approved to start test drilling in a vacant lot in DC. Sounds very Elon. Yeah, it does. Elon. Hyperloop Transportation Technologies plans to have the first commercial Hyperloop line in Abu Dhabi in three to five years. Well, I don't know how we're gonna get tickets on that, but what I do know is that somebody must be storing Stanley Kubrick in here somewhere and I really gotta find him. Oh, yeah, red rum, right? That's the shiny. What's this one? The doors are gonna open, there's blood coming out, right? No. Ah, <sighs> finally back in Grand Central. Okay, you can drop the act, Andrew. We didn't actually take a train, we flew. It's true, we don't have weeks to spend getting on trains and trains and trains. And that's the beauty of Hyperloop. It all comes full circle. So, season three, we're only taking the Hyperloop. Like, I want that in our contract. Absolutely. Next week, we're going to a lab that's growing meat. Will we get to try some? It certainly appears that way. Find out next time. We'll keep you posted on new episodes. All you have to do is click that subscribe button and maybe even that little bell right next to it. Click it.